Hello and welcome to uh, a presentation on elementary hydraulic circuits. What we'll do in this lesson is we'll uh, learn about these simple hydraulic, uh, uh, simple hydraulic circuits. So we'll look at an example of one. And this will uh, assist us in uh, learning more about hydraulic symbology and how you put systems together using these hydraulic symbols. And we'll look at the operational features of uh, uh, some common valve types uh, that, are, that you see often in hydraulic circuits. And then we'll also additionally, additionally look at filters and, and where filters can be placed in uh, hydraulic circuits for various uh, uh, purposes. So to start out with, uh, we want to have a circuit uh, where we have a pump driving a cylinder. That's a very simple, uh, very common circuit. So you have a pressure source that drives an actuator, a linear actuator, which is a cylinder. And what we'd like to have is we'd like to have a hand lever actuated 3 by 2 valve with preference uh, to retract the cylinder. Um, so what 3 by 2 means is that uh, you have three connections to the valve from external uh, uh, tubes coming into the valve and the valve has two, two envelopes or two positions. We also want to protect the pump from uh, overpressure, which is normal if you have a, uh, a uh, fixed displacement pump pumping into a uh, closed volume, you've got to do something. The pressure will rise uh, very high if you don't, if you don't have a relief path, and that could damage the pump or blow the seals out in the system. So can you draw this circuit? So I'll pause here for a moment. You can pause the video if you want before I, conti before I continue. This is what the uh, system looks like, um, and uh, you have a pressure for relief for will, when the cylinder hits its limit on extension. You need the pressure relief also just in the case where you're not actuating the valve. Let me talk about the valve just for a second. Uh, first of all, you have the two uh, envelopes, uh, as I mentioned but you have three connections to it also. You have this connection coming up here. Well, if you look at each envelope and count the number of uh, connections to it, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that means it's a three by two valve. <clears throat> now in this position here, you haven't actuated the valve, but we have a, a dead uh, end here, and so we would have a closed volume, and we have to produce a, or provide a relief path, and this is a pressure relief valve here. Very, very common. It has a, a spring bias on it, so as you can see, the spring uh, uh, is pushing on it and uh, uh, makes it so fluid can't flow through it. But if the pressure builds upstream of the valve, then uh, that will push the envelope or push the valve uh, upward so that the flow path is then provided to go from the uh, pump uh, to the tank. If we actuate the valve, so uh, we push on the lever and uh, that makes this envelope active, then our fluid flows through, <clears throat> goes into the cylinder, into the cap end of the cylinder, and pushes the cylinder to the right. Now this is a special cylinder in that it has a spring in it, and uh, uh, it, that, that's a bias that uh, if you don't actuate it, then what the spring wants to do is it wants to retract the cylinder. So we have pressure to extend the cylinder and then no pressure uh, to retract the cylinder. <clears throat> but of course when the cylinder retracts, when the spring acts, uh, what has to happen is that the, uh, the fluid in the cap end has to have a place to go. And so uh, uh, we have provided that through this uh, default envelope here, the one that is actuated when the valve, or the one that is active when the valve is not actuated because of this spring here. And the fluid can flow back to tank, and the fluid from the pressure source is blocked. And it relieves through the uh, pressure relief valve, the PRRV, into the tank. Let's go on and see what we say here. So if you uh, had this this uh, uh, envelope active and the cylinder extended, it would uh, at some point reach the end of its stroke. And then you would have a trapped vol volume here uh, also, or in, 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 in general, you would have the pump pumping into a volume that would be closed. 
and the piston can't move anymore, so the pressure would build up, and the and the pressure relief valve would actuate, and the fluid would the the the, the valve could or the cylinder could just sit there, and the pump could pump could then pump fluid through the pressure relief valve back into the tank. Okay, now uh, a few other things to observe here. Um, I've said this already, uh, if we don't actuate the valve, the cap end is connected to the tank and the spring will retract the cylinder, it will push on the piston and make the, c make the cylinder retract. Uh, at that point we're blocked here and we're relieving through the pressure relief valve. If you actuate, then the cylinder extends to its limit and the pump uh, relieves through the pressure relief valve. Now let's look at another scenario here, or a different type of valve, and this is a 3x3 three three valve. <coughs> what I mean by that, <coughs> excuse me, if you count the connections, of course there are three, just like we had before, but we have three envelopes now instead of two. We have the two envelopes that we had before, and they're shown on the ends, um, and actually the retract envelope is the default envelope again. <clears throat> and then we have a blocked envelope in the middle. So what could happen with uh, uh, this system or a system, the same system with this valve in it, is the operator could actuate to extend the cylinder. And uh, then somewhere along the way, uh, he or she could put the, uh, or make the center envelope active and that would just lock everything. So uh, that that's just a blocking um, uh, envelope. It blocks the flow from going into the cylinder, but it also blocks the flow coming out of the cap end as it's pushed by the spring. Uh, so this would be the retract envelope, this would be the stop or block envelope, and this would be the extend envelope. It's still a, a three by, or it's a, a, a three connection valve, but with three, uh, three envelopes. So anyway, I've said this already, you can stop in between. <clears throat> uh, you would have uh, two stopping positions away from the default. Now how an operator would feel this is uh, unactuated, you have the rightmost envelope active because the spring has pushed it into that position. And then there'll be detents in the actuation where you push part way and you'll feel a click and that will make the center envelope active uh, and then uh, if you push a little bit further you'd make the left hand envelope active. But what you might want to do, it could be, just depends on the application, uh, actually you might want it so that the default is retraction but you might want the default to be stop and in that case uh, what you would do from a simple standpoint you'd have to get a different valve but this envelope would go on the right and this envelope would go uh, in the middle. So you would have uh, nothing happening, you would have blocked uh, flow both from the pump and from the cylinder back into the tank uh, if you had the center envelope to, on the right and then you would have a retract envelope uh, as the first uh, position, the first click on the valve lever and then you'd have the extend envelope uh, as the second click on the valve and uh, that would look like this. So all I've done here is gotten the uh, this valve and simply swapped these two envelopes. Uh, the, the application uh, would tell you which one of these you want to do. Uh, now uh, what I'd like to do is uh, just talk about this a little bit more. Uh, this is our um, um, original um, system but in a little bit more detail. <clears throat> so we have a 3 uh, by 2 again uh, and the default envelope is uh, retraction, spring-loaded cylinder like we had before. Uh, here's our overpressure protection. So you know when you look at a hydraulic circuit you see this and uh, you should immediately know what it is. Uh, it's in uh, very, uh, very many uh, hydraulic circuits. Spring retract. Uh, now we have a valve uh, that is in its default position and uh, one way to present this is we have the three uh, ports. We have the pressure port which is uh, one coming from the pump 
and then A is the actuation port going to the cylinder, <clears throat> and then we have the tank port. So what we have right now, and the way this is written, is uh, the pressure is just blocked. It's not going anywhere, and the A port is connected to the T port. In the actuated position, what you have is you have P to A, comma T. So the the um, ooh, uh, yes. Um, so the T port then is not connected to anything, as P, and P is connected to A. So the pressure source is connected to the actuation line going to the cylinder. And this valve is a, a three by two valve. Uh, we saw it before. Now we have these three reservoir symbols here, but that doesn't mean we have three reservoirs in the in the system. We only have two. So, um, or not, no, we only have one, sorry. So these symbols, although they look like they indicate discrete reservoirs, they're all leading back to the same place. Oh, there's another one up here too. Of course, when you extend the cylinder, the fluid in the cap side, or the, the rod side of the cylinder has to have some place to go too. So we actually have four, pour, uh, four reservoirs shown here, four reservoir symbols, but they don't indicate four separate reservoirs. They, just indicate that the lines all go back to uh, uh, the tank. Uh, the reason you do that is you just don't want to have to route these return lines all over your uh, drawing and make it uh, real messy. Okay, I'm going to stop right here and start over again uh, with a new video because uh, uh, I just don't want these to run too long and I like breaking them up.